Falcon 9 can start up. Gas close, that's complete. Stage 2, press for flight. Go for launch. T minus 30 seconds. Stage one, so start up pressures. T minus 15 seconds. Falcon 9 is configured for flight. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Zero. Ignition. Lift off. Vehicle is pitching down range. Visual propulsion nominal. And operation securing. Step section 59 on LVNet. Telemetry nominal. You are watching the Falcon 9 as it ascends through the Falcon atmosphere carrying the SpaceX Starlink payload of satellites. Coming up in just a few seconds here, the vehicle is going to be passing through max Q. That is the point of maximum aerodynamic pressure on the vehicle. Let's listen for that call out. Vehicle is experiencing maximum aerodynamic pressure. The vehicle has passed through max Q, which means that the atmosphere is only, only going to get thinner from here on out. Uh, coming up shortly at T plus two minutes and 35 seconds is going to be, yeah, or excuse me, T plus two minutes and 32 seconds is going to be Miko. That stands for main engine cutoff. That's when those nine Merlin engines you can see burning on your screen right now will shut off or cut off. Uh, shortly, only a few seconds after that, will be stage separation at two minutes and 35 seconds, quickly followed by SES-1. That stands for second engine start one. That's when that uh, single Merlin vacuum engine will ignite after stage separation. All telemetry looks nominal from that first stage right now, and trajectories look good. The exhaust gases of those nine Merlin engines are expanding as it gets further and further up into the atmosphere. Stand by for Miko in about five seconds. Stage separation confirmed. You can see it on your screen, and you can hear it through the cheers of the crowd here at SpaceX headquarters uh, that we just had a very a good Miko. We had a good stage separation, and we had a good second engine start. That second stage is now burning brightly on the right-hand side of your screen, accelerating the Starlink stack towards its deployment altitude. On the left-hand side of your screen, you can see the view, uh, a view of the Earth, actually, a beautiful view of the curvature of the Earth and all the lights of the uh, eastern seaboard of the United States. That camera on the left-hand side is attached to the top confirmed. towards the inner stage of the uh, first stage. And on your right, you can see the fairing deploy from that Starlink satellite stack. The crowd here at, headquar at uh, headquarters cheering. I'm sure everyone up in Redmond is happy, too.
So at this point in the mission, uh, there are two things happening simultaneously. On the right-hand side of the screen, you can see that's the SpaceX Starlink stack right there, now exposed to the vacuum of space that we've jettisoned that payload fairing from the top of the rocket. Right now you can see a view of the bottom of the second stage. That is the Merlin vacuum engine, uh, currently burning brightly, doing its first of two burns to raise those satellites up to their deployment altitude of 440 kilometers above the Earth. The next step for this second stage is going to be SECO-1. That's going to happen at 8 minutes and 47 seconds. But while that's happening, we'll be watching the first stage also coming back down towards the surface of the Earth. This will be the third time that we have attempted to recover this first stage, this particular first stage. Uh, those of you who have seen previous landing attempts may notice that we are not doing a boost back burn today. Uh, this is because boost back burns are typically used to cancel out the horizontal velocity of a first stage as it goes away from the, uh, the launch pad and then bring it back towards the Cape. For tonight, we're doing a drone ship landing on Of Course I Still Love You, so we just position the drone ship out in the Atlantic Ocean Second to catch it at the end of its trajectory. Parabola. No need for a boost back burn here. Without a boost back burn, the next step coming up for the first stage will be the entry burn at T plus 6 minutes and 23 seconds. The entry burn will last for approximately 20 seconds and then shut down, and then after that we'll be heading towards a landing burn. All telemetry looks good from that second stage as it continues to pick up speed towards that intended deployment altitude. So as I said earlier, the first stage is now about to start its entry burn at 6 minutes and 23 seconds. This entry burn is uh, to slow that first stage down just a little bit before it hits the thicker regions of the atmosphere. You can see the camera on the first stage on the left-hand side of your screen right now. It's dark, stage but one, in a few minutes, those safe. Merlin in, uh, engines at the bottom of that first stage will light up, and there the they go. One, entry burn started. That is the start of the entry burn. And stage one, entry burn shut down. And that's it. That is the end of the entry burn. The next step for that first stage is going to be the landing burn. You can see some uh, aerodynamic uh, flows past those grid fins right now on the first stage as it gets into the thicker and thicker regions of the atmosphere. Those grid fins help Second to stabilize the first stage as it heads back down towards trajectory. the deck of, of course, I still love you. Stage one is transonic. Lots of signal, stage one, Cape Canaveral, as expected. All telemetry is nominal on the second stage as it continues to accelerate. Next big uh, thing happening here is going to be the landing burn at T plus eight minutes and nine seconds, just about 30 seconds from now. For those of you just joining us, we did have a successful liftoff at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Time from Cape Canaveral. The first stage was able to successfully separate and is now heading back for its third landing attempt in its history. Stage one landing burn has started. The landing burn has started as scheduled. Uh, we don't currently have video from that first stage, but stand by. Vehicles we may be able to get, get something from the drone ship. Landing burn started at 8 minutes and 9 seconds, and the landing is scheduled landing for 8 deployed. minutes and 30 seconds, just about now. You Stage can tell that here at SpaceX FDS headquarters we haven't yet gotten any video from the drone ship, but we're just waiting for confirmation. And this is recovery. Falcon 9 has landed. Landing operators moving to procedure 11.100 on recovery 1 and ECF 9. While we're waiting for that, we are expecting SECO to happen shortly. That is second engine cutoff. 
Vac shut down. It sounds like we may have confirmation that the first stage has landed. That is a shot from Of Course I Still Love You of the first stage of the Falcon 9 rocket for its third landing. Always great to see those first stages come back. Uh, while that was happening, we did have our second engine cutoff one. Uh, that's the end of the second stage's uh, first burn. Normal, and we did have confirmation of a good orbit for that second stage. We have two events coming up here, one at T plus 45 minutes and 56 seconds. That'll be SES2, or second engine start two. This is the second of two burns that the second stage will be performing before deploying the payloads at their intended deployment or altitude of 440 kilometers above the Earth. So with just about 10 seconds until SES2, let's watch. Uh, this will be a short one, only about three seconds of burn. Recognition, shut down. And there it is, that was short and sweet, but that was the second stage's second burn. Seco 2 just commenced, that's the second engine cut off too. PM Eastern time from Cape Canaveral. That first stage was able to accelerate the second stage into orbit and then touch back down on the deck of Of Course I Still Love You. And then the second stage was able to complete its two scheduled burns. The second stage is now currently at the target deployment altitude of 440 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. As you, as you can see on your screen right here, this is a beautiful view of those, uh, the stack of those Starlink satellites as they prepare for deployment. Deployment is scheduled for T plus two minutes and 10 seconds. Let's stand by and watch. This uh, brief loss of signal was expected. We should be able to get that video back very shortly. Stand by. Starlink Constellation deploy confirmed. And we have confirmation of deploy. You can hear the team in the background. Uh, this is an incredible moment for SpaceX. You can see those flat-packed Starlink satellites slowly gliding away from the top of the second stage. This is the highest number, of satellites, uh, highest number of satellites that SpaceX has ever deployed in a single time. There are no deployment mechanisms between those uh, spacecraft, so they really are just uh, slowly fanning out like a deck of cards into space. You can see those spacecraft starting to separate as they naturally glide away from each other. The sun is glinting pretty strongly off the uh, panels and the bodies of those spacecraft. Uh, so it's tough to see them individually, but you can kind of see one breaking away from the pack right now. Those spacecraft will slowly disperse over time. <laughs> 